These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beached margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets in the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which, falling in the land, hath every pelting river made so proud, that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the marine flock. The nine men's morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in wanton green. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed, therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her ang anger, washes all the air. That rheumatic diseases do abound, and thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and old times thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds, it is as in mockery set. The summer, the spring, the childing autumn, the angry winter change, their wanted liveries and the mazed world, by their increase now knows not which is which, and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dispension. We are their parents and original. Amend it then, it lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of mine or, or, or order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often half, she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traitors on the flood. When we have laughed to see the sails conceive and the grow big be bellied with the wanton wind, which she with pretty and swimming gait following her womb, then rich with my young squire, would I imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again. As from being, as from a voyage with rich merchandise, but she, being a mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake, I rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wed wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom, fairies away. We shall chide down right if I longer stay. Well, go thy way, thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back, uttering such dulce chet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music.
I remember. From that very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took, at a fair vestal throne by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a thousand hearts, but I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chast beams of the watery moon, and the imperial vultress passed on, in maiden meditation fancy free. Yet marked where I the bolt of Cupid fell, it fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love and idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make the man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. 